Hello and welcome to the weekly market update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 24th of June 2019 and the time has just gone 11.35 British summer time. Uh, it's been a fairly subdued start uh, to the trading week. Uh, we obviously had, by and large, a very positive uh, and bullish session on global equity markets. Last week, even though we finished slightly in the red uh, in terms of European equities and US equities on Friday, and we've seen, by and large, uh, stocks in, in uh, Europe this morning are a little in the red as well. Um, essentially, the <clears throat> a lot of the issues, a lot of the kind of themes that we had back in the last week are still very much in play. Uh, the the trade standoff between the US and China is uh, is going to be now at the forefront of traders' minds. Uh, the meeting be, um, between Donald Trump and Xi Jinping, um, China's premier, on Friday and Saturday. <clears throat> at the G20 meeting uh, this week is going to be probably the, probably the biggest event planned event of the week. Um, obviously, last week we had a, a dovish ECB, we had a dovish Federal Reserve that boosted that, that boosted equities. But now that we've had the Fed meeting out of the way and the comments from Mr. Draghi out of the way of the ECB, traders are now going to be looking ahead to global trade. And even though in the last few weeks the language between the US and China has mellowed, the situation is still far from resolved. Uh, so it's possible we could see a bit of low volatility in the next few days ahead of the meeting. Um, obviously, obviously, there is the situation between the US and Iran as well. Um, you, uh, we've had announcements from the Trump administration that we could be looking at you know, more, more severe um, sanctions being imposed on Iran. Uh, the downing of a, a U.S. R uh, drone by the Iranian regime has obviously led to kind of heightened tensions between the U.S. and Iran, and the possibility of more sanctions in the pipeline um, has put pressure on, uh, has put upward pressure on the oil market. Um, what else? What else is going on? There, that's essentially the kind of big themes of the, of the week. Uh, we do have some corporate and some economic uh, updates for to talk about at the end of the video in our week ahead article. Um, but and I'll start off by having a look at uh, what's going on at the major markets. So starting off with the FTSE 100. So uh, the wider upward trend that the FTSE 100 has been in uh, throughout 2019 is still very much in play. Uh, we obviously hit a multi multi week high um, last week, but we have managed to give back some of the ground here uh, um, uh, towards in, in the last few sessions. But nonetheless, while we hold above this blue line here, the 50 day moving average at 73.47, while we hold above that area, it's likely we could see the wider upward trend continue, and we could be looking at uh, targeting this area here, uh, the uh, mid April, uh, the late April high of in around 75.28. Should we go beyond that? We could be looking at targeting this area here, a level uh, seen at the back end of September last year, and that comes into play at 75.58. And even if you do drop below the 50 moving average here, support could be found from this yellow line here, the 100 moving average, and that comes into play at 72.74. And it's only really if you have a size of it's only really if you have a size of break below this red line here. The 30 moving average at 71.52. Uh, could then we actually be, begin to be a bit concerned, and, and then that, that could be an indication that the kind of the, the negative move uh, since since uh, mid April is actually going to continue on. Uh, but the crucial bit uh, to, to take away from uh, from the, this, this bit, the first 100 is while we hold above the blue line here, the 50 moving average is likely we could see further gains, and that, that's a very common theme across. Uh, some of the other major European markets and also the US markets, which I'll come on to now in a second. So take a look at the uh, the DAX over in Germany. Very similar situation here. The DAX is in, in the DAX in this case had a very decent, very strong rally uh, in the middle of last week. The market is giving back some of the ground that it made uh, uh, last week, but notice how again it's comfortably above its 50-day moving average, which comes into play at 12,127. And while we hold above that metric, it's likely we could, uh, could, could continue the 2019 rally. And we could be looking at targeting this area here in at uh, 12,460. And should we go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting this reaching up around here in around 12,600. Even if you do drop below the 50 moving average, support could be found from this area here. The, uh, the psychologically important about 12,000. And once again, it's only really if you have a size of break below this red line here, the two-day moving average, which comes into play in around 11,600. It's only really if you have a size of break below that, could then we, we actually uh, 
could then we be, be the uh, be, begin to think that the uh, the, kind of the downward trend uh, that began in early May is in play. Over in the US, the Dow Jones, the US markets, I must say, are in far better shape than their European counterparts. Uh, we saw um, records on some of the US indices last week. If you look here, um, the Dow Jones is well above its 50-day moving average, and we're not too far away. And we're, and we're not too far away from the highs that were achieved only last week. Um, the Dow Jones is still very much in its upward trend, and continue to press on higher from here. Uh, we're currently expecting the Dow Jones to open at around 26,750. We could be looking at heading up towards 26,800, 900, and up, kind of up towards the psychologically important 27,000 mark. But like I said, some traders may be a bit hesitant to kind of um, buy, into, buy into stocks ahead of the G20 meeting. Some traders might be kind of sitting on the fence and waiting to see how the meeting goes. Uh, if you do manage to drift lower on the Dow Jones, Support could be found from this area here in around 26,400 or perhaps from this blue line here, the two the moving average, which comes to play just north of 26,000. I'll take a look now at the S&P 500 and it's a very similar situation on the S&P 500 where the highs that were racked, uh, you know, we posted record highs on the S&P 500. Um, and the levels that we're, that we're certainly expecting uh, the S&P 500 are to open it are not too far away um, from the uh, from the record highs that were achieved last week. So once again, it's in a solid upward trend. It's comfortably above its 50-day moving average, this blue line here. And if you can continue to press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting the psychologically important 3,000 mark. If you do see a drift to the downside in the S&P 500, we might see fresh fires enter the fold. Seeing as buying on the dip has been a, a popular strategy uh, in the last few weeks, and broadly speaking, uh, it's been popular throughout 2019. So if the market does manage to drift a bit lower, support can be found in this area here, in around the uh, 2,900 mark, or perhaps even from this blue line here, the 50-day moving average, which comes to play at 2878. And even if you drop below that, we could be looking heading back down towards this yellow line here, the 100-day moving average, which comes in, into play in around 2,840. Um, take a look at now at gold. Gold has had uh, quite an impressive run uh, in the last few weeks. Uh, we've had a major rally in gold uh, basically since, since the end of end of May. So the last about three, three and a half weeks, we've seen a major move to the upside in gold. Uh, gold is holding above the psychologically psychology important 1,400 mark. We're back to levels not seen. I mean, we recently hit levels of gold not seen since August 2013. So it's quite no multi-year highs have been racked up on the gold market. Now, this rate at which the market is moving up to uh, moving to the upside is extremely impressive, but it might struggle to continue at the pace it's currently increasing at. So we might see a bit of a pullback before we see a more gentler rise in the price of gold. So the up, up the up the upper trend is still very much in place. But some traders are skeptical. The rate at which it's increasing might be a bit too much, and we may see kind of a, slow, a cooling or a slowing down at the rate at which it's, it's pressing higher. If it do manage to, if you can hold above 1400, the next area to keep an eye for will be a, a 1433, a level not seen last seen once again since August 2013. Um, in case if you do see any moves to the downside in gold, support can be found from this region in around here, in around 1382. Or perhaps down this 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 area here in around 1360. As I mentioned, there's been a uptick in, in the oil market given the heightened tensions between Iran and the US. So we can see here that the oil market suffered a fairly sizable sell-off uh, from about late April uh, until only uh, until the middle of June. But we saw decent support on a uh, Brent crude oil here in around just kind of uh, just in the kind of a north of sixty dollars a barrel. In around kind of 60, 27, 60, 30 dollars a barrel in around here, and we have been pressing higher. And you notice in Brent that the, the recent move to the upside managed to take out the highs of the middle of June. And if you could press on higher from here and go beyond six dollars a barrel, we could be looking heading back towards this blue line here, the 50 day moving average, which comes to play at 68 spot 60. And you notice that the market that the 50 day moving average access support. Uh, in May, and, if it, and uh, ever since then, um, the metric has acted at resistance, 
Notice how the push higher in late May failed to actually get up as high as the 50-day moving average. So as it was a, a relatively important metric in the, in the last few months, it might be a new a bit, a important metric in the near future. So if you can press on higher from here, we could be looking at retesting 68 spot 60. And it's only really if you take out the recent lows here um, in in, uh, in in the middle of June, because then we begin to worry and look at heading back down towards $60 per barrel. Excuse me. So we'll now take a look at WTI, and it's a fairly similar situation uh, in, in regards to WTI, whereby um, the, in the last few weeks, given the tensions between US and Iran, the, the WTI market has managed to press on higher. As you can see here, the highs that we achieved here in the last few sessions have clearly managed to take off the highs of the middle of June. We're pressing on higher here. There's a steady increase in positive momentum on the MACD indicator, so we can be more confident that this upward trend is going to continue. So the upward move in the oil market has been confirmed by the steady increase in positive momentum. If you press on higher from here, once again, we could be looking at targeting the 50-day moving average, which comes into play at 59 spot 25. Or close towards or up towards $60 per barrel. Similar situation whereby the 50 day moving average on WTI managed to act as support on a few occasions, so the possibility it might act as resistance, might act as resistance on the way up. Once again, it's only really if you take out the recent lows, uh, which are just coming to play it just, just north of $50 per barrel, could then we become more confident that the kind of that the downward trend. That began in mid to late April is as you, is is going to is going to continue and headed back down towards uh, 48 and 47. Uh, take a look now at the euro versus the US dollar. So the euro dollar has had a fairly sizable uh, move to the upside, uh, basically in the last month or so. I've actually now managed to close above. Uh, on a daily basis above the 30 moving average which comes to play in at 113.53 we're now holding comfortably above that and if you could press on higher from here we could be looking at targeting 114 and if you go beyond that we could be looking at targeting this area here uh, the mid march high of in at one spot 14.48 and if you go beyond that we could be looking at targeting the, uh, the 115 area now it is worth noting that the um, euro dollar has been in a fairly clear and consistent downward trend uh, for, for, well, for a good for a good chunk of time between January and to be honest the only, only only very recently the end of May so the wider trend is to the downside so if we do see the market turn over on itself and if we do drop back below the recent lows um, in at one spot 11.81 we could be looking heading back back down towards the, the lows of this um, the recent lows in 2019 in at one spot 11.10 Take a look now at what's going on at the British pound versus the US dollar. So sterling dollar has been in a fairly clear and obvious downward trend the last few months, a nice series of lower lows and lower highs. But you will notice that um, when the market printed printed its lowest level, um, a level not seen since early January, uh, only last week, we had a fairly sizable move, move uh, to the upside. And the recent highs have managed to take out the highs of, uh, of, of early June. If we continue the press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting one spot 28. And if you can hold above that, we could be looking heading back towards the true of the moving average, this red line here, in at one spot 29.30. And if you go beyond that, the uh, psychologically important 130 mark could come into play. And uh, it's you know if we do manage to turn over on itself uh, once again, we could be looking heading back down towards 126. And if you take off the recent lows. This area here, in at one spot 25.42, we could then be heading back down toward this area here in about one spot 24.76. And lastly, on, on terms of uh, charts, I should take a look at Bitcoin. I talked about Bitcoin uh, on last week's video uh, for the first time in a while because we saw a fairly sizable move. This is where Bitcoin was uh, when we spoke when we recorded this video last week. Uh, it was in around the um, Kind of uh, 9,300, 9,200 market around here, and now we're, now we're, if you look at the level of Bitcoin, we're well, you know, we're not too far away. We're around 10,900. So Bitcoin has continued to kind of press on higher um, in the last week. We've seen a steady increase in positive momentum, so we can be more confident that the uh, this upward so the momentum is clearly with the buyers. 
we said it, we faced a 15 month high on Bitcoin, um, and we, we, we've gapped the upside, uh, which is which is a which is a, which is a, can be can be viewed as a, a bullish sign. And if you can hold above, if you can hold above the kind of psychologically born 10,000 mark, we could be looking at heading up towards 12,000. Now we haven't seen 12,000 Bitcoin since uh, January 2018. And even if you do see uh, any kind of pullbacks in Bitcoin, support could be found from this area here in around 10,000, or perhaps even down as low as kind of 8,000, or maybe even this area here in around 7,471. Uh, I'll take a quick look now at the week ahead. Um, the week ahead article can be found on our, new, on our website. If you go to cmcmarkets.com and type in news and analysis, um, you can see some of the uh, some of the articles that we do are published here. So looking ahead to tomorrow, we have full year figures from Carper Wright in the UK. We have fourth quarter numbers from FedEx. Uh, we have third quarter numbers uh, after the closing bell of, of, from uh, Micron Technologies. On Wednesday, we have full year figures from Stagecoach. Uh, the train line IPO will, will, will begin unconditional trading on Wednesday. On Wednesday, we also have the uh, Reserve Bank of Australia, Reserve Bank of New Zealand Reserve Bank of New Zealand interest rate decision. Uh, on Thursday, we have fourth quarter numbers from Nike. Uh, we also have the final reading of uh, first quarter US GDP. Uh, the G20 meeting begins uh, on Friday, and also on Friday we have first quarter, first quarter, the fine reading of UK first quarter GDP reading. Uh, that, that's all made from this week. Uh, if you have any comments to make in this video or any of the other videos we've made here at CMC, please feel free to leave review and good reviews. Thank you very much.